All right, so every year around this time, I like to do a Christmas song and give you enough time so that you can work it up and perform it for other people through the holidays if that's what you want to do, or you can just sit around and play it on the couch. But this year, we're going to take a look at Jingle Bells, kind of a bluesy shuffle version of this that you can play by yourself. And I wanted to redo this lesson. I did actually did this back in 2014. I did a version of Jingle Bells then, but that version uh, what required a jam track. And as I was kind of looking at lessons that I had done in the past, um, I thought, well, maybe this would be cool to do a version that's standalone like this, where you can just play it, grab it, guitar, and just perform this by yourself. That way you don't have to get out a jam track and, and do all of that. So you have kind of two versions now. And so we're going to break this down note for note. And actually, in this video, we're going to go through all of the lesson material, at least the understanding of it, where I explain where everything comes from, the chord shapes we're playing out of, so that you really understand what's going on. And actually, I recommend you watching this video first, so that you understand all of the sort of the background information. And then if you want, as a premium member, you can go over to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP389 and do a search for this lesson so you can get the tablature and the on-screen tab viewer. That way you can get into the very specifics of exactly what's going on with the strums and you know note for note breakdown that way. But I think it's important to understand all of the uh, background information first, and that's what we're going to cover in this video. And when you do that, it just makes the other thing so much easier. It makes it go a lot faster as well. All right, so let's talk about the chord structure in this. It's really just a 1-4-5 chord format. So it's we're playing this in the key of A. So the 1 chord is going to be an A, 4 chord is going to be a D, 5 chord is going to be an E. Now, the chorus of Jingle Bells has an extra chord when you go into... Um, so this is the chorus. You have your one chord, and then you go to the four chord, which is your D, back to the one chord. Then it goes up to a major two chord. So that's going to be a B chord. That's the one exception to the one, four, five thing in Jingle Bells. You have that major two chord that's thrown in there. So just remember that B chord is coming. We'll get into that as we get into the chorus, but let's start with the verse. So the first thing that I like to do is work out the melody, a very simple version of it. kind of thing, right? So you, you work out a very simple version of the melody just so you can kind of get your bearings. And then I start looking at what chord shapes are around that melody. So I know that that one chord is an A, so I play something like... You know, I play the melody and then strum the chord in that little empty space there. Then I did the same thing for the D chord. Same thing for the E chord. So it's just kind of feeling it out, trying to figure out how the melody and the chords work together. And so that's the first thing I do. It's very scientific. It's not like super improvised or anything where I'm just off the top of my you know, head doing it. I have to sit down and kind of really noodle around and kind of work that out. So that's at least my process for getting started. And then I come up with the feel for it. Do I want to go... kind of boring and I ended up with it's got that kind of bluesy shuffle everything I do ends up going somewhere into the blues it just that's just the way my brain thinks so I slide into the chord and then I do an upstroke with my right hand on the chord fourth fret third string second fret third string and then you go back to that 2nd fret 4th string. So all together. And then there's two other upstrokes. And you can start to feel that shuffle. Now, if you're struggling at this point, just slow it way down. Try and just get the feel. And then repeat it over and over again until you can start to get that smooth. And just remember, as a premium member, you have access to that tab if you need that. Okay, so. Now watch this. So to get back to that verse, I did this walk up, which is 4th fret, 5th string, open 4th string, 1st fret, and then we go back into the chord. Just kind of a bluesy way to get back into the verse. Now, this time, we're going to go to the 4 chord. 
And so what I do is I keep the bar there on the second fret, but I put my middle finger on the third fret, second string, ring finger is on the fourth fret, fourth string. And if you look at what is going on there with the top four strings, one, two, three, four, that's a D chord. You can see the D chord shape right there, right? But I've got this extra note. Some of you might think of that as an extra note anyway. It's not the conventional way we play the D chord. But it is playing the D chord out of the C chord shape, if you want to think of it in terms of the caged system. So we have... So that note from the melody lives within the D chord, and that's another thing to keep in mind as you're writing a composition like this. Try and find the notes that live within those chord shapes. And if the note from the melody doesn't live in that chord shape, you move up to another chord shape that might have it, right? You're always kind of repositioning to find where it might be. So it goes like this. So I think that's how I played it, and you can check the tablature on that, but I think it's picking the notes out of the chords there. Now we're going to go to the five chord. And the way I played that, I kept that D chord shape there, fourth string, second string, and then watch this little hammer-on pull-off between the 2nd fret and the 3rd fret on the 2nd string. And then the 4th fret, 3rd string. And then I go down to that 1st fret, 3rd string, and that note is in the E chord. That's how you want to think about it. You're just thinking about the chord. That way I can play the chord right after I hit the melody. And then after that, I threw in this little blues lick from the A minor pentatonic scale. And that's just pattern five of the A minor pentatonic scale. And I slid from the third fret to the fifth fret on the first string, back to the third fret, and then walked it down five, four, three on the second string. First fret, second fret, third string. A really fun little blues lick. So, from the beginning then, slowly, we have... Right, and then we go back to the A chord after that. All right, now that's the verse, and so the verse repeats itself. The second time, to go back into the verse again, I did that same little bluesy walk up, just like we did. So that's the same. Now this is a variation, and I like to do variations just to give you some different ideas. So I came up here and went. And I want you to remember this as this really fun way to go from the one chord, what we're doing is we're going from the one chord to the four chord, from the A to the D. So I went. So that's this A triad here. So think of your A major bar chord on, where you're barring on the fifth fret. If you look at the top three strings of that, that's, that's what I'm playing there. So I slid into that sixth fret third string, and then I'm barring the first two strings in the fifth fret. Then walk that down two frets. That would be a G, technically. And then we come down to this shape. Now that's your D7 shape, if you think of that shape from uh, your first position. But if I play it here, I've got my ring finger on the 7th fret 2nd string. And you're playing strings 4, 3, and 2. So I think of that as a little A6 triad. If you think of your A6 chord, you slide down 2 frets to the A9. I've talked about this in other lessons. From the 6 to the 9. I'm just playing that. A6, I go down two frets to the A9. So all together you've got... Now remember that off of this chord shape. This is how you want to think about this going forward. If you can picture this A bar chord, or, or I'm sorry, just this bar chord shape. This is your using your E chord shape out of cage. So if you can picture that, you've got the triad, you go down two frets, You've got another triad here, which would be the six version of that chord, and then you go down two frets for the nine version of that chord. And all of that is just a walk down to get you to your four chord. So it's just a really clever way to go from the one to the four. And now we're playing the D chord. And so I just threw that in as kind of a nice variation. So it goes like... All right, and then... 
we go to the E chord again. So after we play that E chord, I play the rest of the melody on that open one string, and that allows me, by playing that open string, to take my hand off the fretboard, and I can put it back in place anywhere I want. So I came up here and went to get us back to the A chord. A little bluesy thing right out of minor pentatonic scale pattern one. So after that, we're gonna go fifth fret, second string, seventh fret, second string, eighth fret, second string, and then walk it back down. Seventh fret, third string, and then watch this. Really cool little blues lick. That's uh, right out of pattern one of the minor pentatonic scale. So I'm barring the first three strings on the fifth fret, but I'm only playing strings two and three. Doing a hammer onto the sixth fret, third string, seventh fret, fourth string. Once I come to that seventh fret, fourth string, we're gonna play, uh, we're gonna collapse the finger there so I can play uh, strings two and three on that seventh fret, and then go back. So all together. Now remember this lick, I've said this many, many times, but I always like to re-emphasize uh, re it. If you're looking at this chord shape, hear that little blues lick that lives off of that chord shape? So now look at the things you've got off of this shape. You've got, and then you've got, you've got all this stuff that you're coming up with, you know, that live off of this chord shape. So, so that, think, always think of these lessons in terms of what you can take away from them, not just what you can memorize, but how can you take something like this and then apply it to another song? That would be a really good exercise. It, it doesn't have to be just Christmas music, it could be anything. All right, so from that E chord, and then I just go right into the A chord right there. And that's just your A chord, bar chord, but I'm only playing the top four strings of it. All right, so let's back up and go from the beginning and play that entire verse section of the song. for the chorus. Look at this. We're gonna, as we play that A chord, we're just gonna stay on the A chord, and I'm gonna play it just like you would sing the chorus. Three down strokes. Now, to give you some variation, I threw in that. It's kind of like a little rockabilly lick. So we have that the first time, and then we, I'm holding that chord shape, but I'm sliding back into it, but I'm picking the third string. Then I hit the second string, which is behind that fifth fret, in the chord there. My pinky goes down on the seventh fret second string. And then I hit the, the one string there on the fifth fret. And that's another great takeaway blues lick that you can tie back to this chord shape. Look at all these blues licks you've got off of this E chord shape. There's that other lick, right? So now look at all this stuff you can do. All right, so let's go back from the, the chorus there we have. Okay, and then I held that chord shape and went. So that's the second string. We're gonna do, go from the fifth fret to the seventh fret, back to the fifth fret. Then walk down the chord, three, four. So, like that. And then, so that's fourth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret on the third string. Then I go back to the 4th fret, 3rd string, 7th fret, 4th string, 5th fret, 4th string. Let's talk about what's going on here. Now this is just the major uh, pentatonic scale. So we're, think about A, you've got, right? That would be your major pentatonic scale. That would be pattern 2 of your major pentatonic scale. So I'm just walking that up chromatically, 4, 5, 6. And then once I come back down here, I'm back into the minor pentatonic scale. And that's why it sounds a little more bluesy once I come down to here. Now this note that I landed on, which was the fifth fret, fourth string, that would be your seven out of the A7 chord. So you can think of an A7. 
that note that gives it that real bluesy sound, that's what that note is. So anytime you want to blues up your lead, this is another little tip, just find the seven, the seven interval, actually the flat seven, um, which would give it that dominant seven sound. You can always work that note into your lead. See, when I land on that note, it just, it, it hints at an A7 chord. And obviously it doesn't have to just be that note. You could go, you know, any octave of it. All right, so from the chorus we have, Now we go to the D chord, and I played it right there off of that A chord shape. I go back to the A chord, but instead of playing it here, I came down here so that I could go like this. Right? So I wanted to play that B chord. Remember I said we have the major 2 chord? Well that's the B chord. And when I play, if I were to play it up here, I can't get the melody out of it. I wanted this. Right? And I couldn't do that easily here. So I went down to this B7. And so I'm playing the B7 here with my pinky on the second fret, second string, and that's creating that melody. I take my pinky off, put it back down, and then we play the E chord. And it just, even by playing those chords, it's, it's spelling out the melody. So from the beginning of that chorus, it, to the E. Now obviously the, the chorus repeats itself. So to get back to the A, I was looking at different ways. I was looking at something like that, but I ended up with... So this is a nice little walk up, and you can remember this as a blues lick going forward, but it's the first fret, third string. Actually I hammer, did a hammer on with that. But while I'm playing that, I'm picking that note, but I'm using my ring finger to pluck the open one string. So I'm just going to walk this up. It's a really cool little simple blues lick where you're taking the open one string, but you're picking the third string. And then I go into the, up to the sixth fret on that third string, and I'm doing a slide from the fifth fret to the sixth fret. And I did the same little, that same little lick that I showed you, that rockabilly. Okay, now this time through I went, Now what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm playing out of this A chord shape. That's how I'm thinking of it. And so a, a really good exercise for you at some point would be to take all of your the, the chord shapes out of Caged and connect the major scale to those chord shapes. I actually have a lesson on how to do that. I'll put that up on the screen right now. But if I look at this chord shape, for example, I know that I've got... I've got the major scale right there. And so what that allows me to do is when I picture that chord, I can go... I can start to improvise using the major scale, and that's what I did there. So that's the uh, ninth fret, first string, 12th fret, first string, 10th fret. Back to the ninth fret. And then there's the 10th fret, second string. 12th fret, second string. So all the, and that's just cross picked with the right hand. It's just our alternate pick, down up, down up. And then you come to this note, which would be the eighth fret, back to the ninth fret. All, all together. Okay, now when you land on that ninth fret, first string, I'm gonna go ahead and put my ring, or my middle finger down on the 10th fret, second string. And really, that's just your A chord. I'm just picturing that A chord there using the D chord shape. But I'm playing strings one and two out of it. In fact, this entire lick was just something I'm, I'm playing around this chord shape. I'm picturing this chord and I know I can noodle around with a major scale in that pick position. So after I hit that, I go down two frets. And that's just another thing you can remember. If you're playing this you know, out of this chord shape, if you're playing those top two strings, you can always just go down two frets to play the 7 version of that. So that would be like an A7, right? Okay, and then we go to the D chord, which I came up here, and I was thinking of the D chord, it's hard to do on this guitar, up in this position, that's where I would be barring on the 10th fret, but I'm just playing the top three strings. 
that t little triad, just like we did with the A up down here. So it's... And then I threw in the D minor. So we're gonna go from the four to the minor four, kind of a classic move that you hear quite a bit in, in blues and other types of music. The Beatles did that quite a bit. So you play the four chord major, four chord minor, back to your A chord. And then to conclude, I went little blues lick there. I just went right back into Bluesville. My, a half bend there on the seventh fret first string. And I'm just thinking minor pentatonic scale pattern one for A. So a half bend release, fifth fret first string. And then eighth fret, fifth fret on the second string. Seventh fret, third string. And then there's five and six on the uh, third string. And then I go all the way down to the seventh fret, fourth string, and look at that, I walked it down just like we talked about, down to that seven, the, or the, the flat seven. So, so that gets us in position to go back into the four chord. And I did the same thing that I played, it's sort of like a tag, I just tagged the end. Instead of playing it up here though, I came down and played the D chord where we all know it, and then to the D minor, it's the same thing I did here, D, D minor, A, right? So we're gonna do that here. A. And then we go to the E. So there's your E chord. And then I'm hitting that open one string. Third fret, second string, open. Open second string. And then we go back to the A. And actually instead of just playing the A, I went. Little kind of a hillbilly lick there. So it's fifth fret, down up, and then that's third and fourth on the fifth string. So that would be the second fret, fourth fret, and then up to the second fret, third string. So, and then classic blues ending, that's just an A7, but I'm playing it in a half step down. Remember this tip also, anytime you want to end a song, you just, whatever that seven, dominant seven chord is, you just start at a half step down and slide it into it. You could do that anywhere, right? Any, any version of A7, just half step down and slide up to it. All right, so that's my acoustic blues version of Jingle Bells. And hopefully you picked up a few of these little blues licks that are tied to these chord shapes so that you can start to use them in other things, whether you're improvising or you're trying to write your own songs like this. And remember, you can do this too. This is not like, doesn't take any kind of, you know, musical genius to sit down and write an arrangement like that. Once you can understand the chord shapes and, and those scales, and I'm just using basically the pentatonic scales and a few basic chord shapes, whatever you're hearing in your head, whether it be a jazzy version or a blues or whatever, you can start to work that out. And actually that'd be a great exercise after you get this one down and understand it to, to take it on your own and try and come up with your own arrangement of a song. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you next week for a new lesson.